Welcome to the individualized and multi-level subject teaching. Um, uh, thanks for coming and thanks for filling out the survey before. It gave me lots of uh, stuff to look up and do and uh, hopefully uh, you'll, you'll all get something uh, that you needed out of today. So I'm a consultant with EPC. I work for the Eastern Township School Board. So there's quite a few consultants here as well. Uh, we have our great Ikip Shuk team who are here as well, Michelin and Julie, who are also here to help out with resources for math and French. So for those of you who wanted that, uh, you just uh, flipped the, the screen there, Mark. Shit. <laughs> Things Thank are you. going well, ladies and gentlemen. And we have Mark from the RISD who's doing my tech because the well, worst, I'm worst very tech guy ever. Well, no bet no worse than me who had a computer that crashed and now this computer does not work properly, which was why the reason why I wasn't on it in the first place. So um Avi's here also from the RISD, but he's uh driving around so he won't uh he won't be talking too much. And anybody else from the RISD, Mark? So at this time, no, but we have two new members, uh, Mona Taslimi and Paulette Cake. So if you go on our website or uh, if you, you know, any of our paraphernalia, you'll find them. Uh, we're really excited about that. We also have some EPC members. Uh, um, yeah. Present. Ah, so, Darlene and Frank, Frank and Gail's supposed to be on here at some point sure. and not sure who else. Also have my colleague Fabienne, who's in France right now, 10 o'clock at night, who has come to help out with the new history stuff. So a couple of people asked for stuff about history. So uh, she's been uh, working a little bit on it uh, while she's uh, on sabbatical in France. So yeah. So thank you all for showing up and helping me. And uh, that's it. So today's agenda. Uh, just go over a few of the themes and your realities that I extracted from what you uh, from what you gave me. I'll go over contact lists and resources. Um, then, oh, wait a second. This doesn't look like the one that we're actually should be in. Huh. Uh, actually, then after that, it's going to be breakout rooms. We're going to be doing something on motivation and that because that seemed to be a big uh, thing and then it'll be breakout rooms for math french history and then i will do one for english and any other little things that anybody wants to chat about what's changed from the last time is this time there was a lot of concerns about teacher self-care and a little more on student motivation and uh, mental health as well from both sides so um so yeah so you had uh, the questions were all over the place. So just like in a multi-level, multi-subject, multi-everything classroom, this workshop's designed like that. So I went through and got some people to help me out and put together some stuff. So here we go. I don't want to take too much time talking because uh, I'd like to get into the breakout rooms and get you on. So um, I created the contact list last year. If you're an individualized teacher and you haven't put your name on it yet, you can put your name on it um, and it, you just fill it in and it's by you put your subject and whatever and your email and everyone on there <laughs> has agreed to have uh, their email shared and you can email any of them for resources at any time and you know what subject area they are. So super handy resource if you're looking for something, send something out to the people who are in your subject area. Uh, I created also the individualized Google folder with, if you hit on it, all the resources from today are in there, all the resources from the last few that I've done are in there. There's links to everything. So it's all in there. And then of course you have uh, subject area resources compiled by Kip Shuck on their website. You have all the past ATC sessions, not just this one on their session and you have a PD a la carte. So there's lots of places for you to go and look for other PD. So all of the links for everything are right there. So the, there was a, quite a bit of concern over balancing our own health and students' needs. And probably my answer is probably not necessarily going to be super popular with everyone or not necessarily what you think someone should say. 
Um, I know that um, we're hired to teach, but we all know that we wear uh, tons of hats and most of us find ourselves assuming every role and responsibility possible because we care deeply for our students and, you know, and we take on, we take on, their trauma gives us, it takes a personal toll on us as well. So you, as teachers, we can help fix some of their problems. And do everything. Like you have to remember that you are not the psychologist. You are not trained to do different things. We are just, we cannot be everything to everyone. And it's not our responsibility to save every single student every single day, which is what we feel we should do. But the reality is, is that we can't. So basically what I've come down to what our responsibilities are as a teacher. And I believe it's we observe and we know what our students' typical behaviors and responses are. And we notice, you know, when there's stuff that's, that's different, uh, we kind of try and figure out, you know, uh, information on what we are observing and we connect with people and we ask and we try and figure out what's going on. We ask students what's going on and see um, uh, how we can help. We listen and whatever. But then after that, basically we need to start, if it's not something that's in our wheelhouse and our expertise, we need to start linking the students to other supports in our school community or communities around that are appropriate for them. Um, a lot of times, you know, we feel that we have to do everything and that's, that's, that's really just not the case. In the end, you'll just make yourself sick and you won't be good for any of your students at all. Um, so yeah, I think that's probably the most important thing to remember is just because you are passing it off to somebody else who has um, uh, better box of uh, strategies than you doesn't mean that you're failing the student. Like you, you just need to make sure that you get them into contact with the right people to help them. So tricks for, because we all have this, uh, tricks for balancing teaching and life. Um, Got to realize that we can only control the controllable. There's lots of things that are out, totally out of our control. Um, and, but there are things that we, we can be in control of. And, uh, you know, we can pr prioritize things and uh, focus on things that we know that will make an impact. Um, and if we do that, then we will be healthier as well. Uh, setting reasonable expectations for ourselves um like we're we're still in the midst of a pandemic it's it's out there it's still it's not business as usual uh i don't know about you but my my life is way different now than it was two years ago the demands are greater uh and we i'm not as productive or on top of it or as together as i once was right like i'm just not um so like, I, I can't get to everything anymore. And I feel bad about it. But at the same time, I'm like, okay, I've got to set my goals realistically and make sure they're attainable. And I've kind of tried to do it as, okay, if I look at all the stuff that's on my plate, what are the things that are going to get me the biggest bang for my buck? Who, what are the things that are going to touch the most students and help the most people or teachers or whatever, depending on your role? Um, so yeah, setting reasonable expectations for ourselves, super, super important. Practicing time management and balancing things. Um, I, I don't know about you, but like, I'll expect to spend, spend, you know, a little bit of time on something and then it takes me like, you know, three times as long as what I thought. I leave work late, I take things home, I spend hours there. And yeah, a lot of us do that frequently. So if it's playing a, if it's, going into your family life and it's affecting your health and your well-being then you need to you know get some time management uh, techniques and really try to use them uh yeah we all want to be great teachers great consultants great whatever but at the same time we have to have a life and it's okay to let some things slide uh communication uh i think a lot of the times we don't want people to know 
you know, that we aren't doing things as well as what we want to do and things aren't getting done and, uh, you know, how overwhelmed we are, but we need to let people know, especially colleagues and our administration. They don't all necessarily always hear it, know it, because if we don't say it, they can't know it all. So I think we just need to be transparent about what we're experiencing and finding somebody, find a trusted colleague, someone you can confide in. Chances are, if it's a colleague, they've been, they've been there and they'll have maybe their own little tricks and tips to help you out, which might save you, um, you know, some stuff in the long run. Know that there's going to be ups and downs. Like it's okay. Like we are feeling burned out, and it's can it's easy to say, oh my god, there's something wrong with me. But honestly, it's normal. And the like, we don't jump out of bed every morning super excited. Like we just don't. Like especially right now. I don't know about you, but I'm like I'm like at an all time low, and I know that here's a tough one. Like it's really really tough. Hopefully next year will be better. And, and that's the way life goes, right? We have good days and we have bad days and, and that, and it's okay. It's to realize like when we can talk to ourselves and realize that, okay, this is, this, this too will pass, then we can have a little bit of a better outlook on things as well. Uh, one thing we do not do is model self-compassion. Uh, we will tell our students all the time, you know, uh, you know, growth mindset, this, that, you know, it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to do this. But then when we turn it on ourselves, we, you know, we expect way more of ourselves than we do of anybody else. So um, I think that's uh, something to, um, to do. And then create your own playtime. I know that like with the curriculum demands and the multi-level teaching and everything, it can get overwhelming and there's not enough time in the day to get to all the students and there's not enough time to get to all the competencies and all of this and all of that, you know whatever. But at the same time, if we do not take the time to play and enjoy it, our students aren't going to be either. So, and this leads right into our motivation, our student motivation and engagement, right? We need to take the time to play too and share jokes, and stories, puzzles, games, brain teasers, do a word of the day. It doesn't take long, but it sets the tone for the students and uh, you can align it with your topics for the day or whatever. And it just, it, it starts things off differently than going right into the grind. Um, so I think sometimes we forget to have fun because everything, all the demands get in the way. So bell ringers, puzzles, brain teasers. Um, I left this slide blank and when you go into it, if you want to put some of your favorites in there, that would be nice. Everyone will have access to this after. So, and then I will also transfer them um, into the other places that it are, but it would be nice to see what people are doing. So that's something that you can do later on. And uh, it's just a nice, nice little thing to share with people. Um, I should have put some in, but honestly, uh, that was one of the things that I said, you know what, it's just not gonna get done because I don't have time to do it. So, but I will put some in laughter. Uh, motivation and engagement. That's a huge one. I think everybody on the list said something about motivating students and engaging students. And uh, so I did a little bit of research from a whole bunch of different places and kind of put a few things together. Um, they're separate, but they're related. They're often confused. So motivation is the driving force that causes us to take action. Engagement is the actual behavior or evidence of our motivation. So like when we're engaged, we're actually acting. Whereas motivation is the stuff that goes on internally that forces us to do something or external sometimes, but um, yeah. So motivation is necessary for engagement, but successful engagement can also help with motivation. So they're kind of, they're very, very intertwined um but there that's the way it is and i kind of like this because what's coming next is I, I think you'll understand why i put this in but uh sir ken robinson said uh farmers and gardeners know you can't make a plant grow the plant grows itself 
the students grow themselves. All you can do is provide the conditions for growth. Okay, so it's very important, I think, that we remember that. We cannot make the students do anything. They have to take it upon themselves at a certain time. What we can do is change the things that we do in the classroom and put things in place for them to be able to move forward in their learning. So motivation and engagement. Three important questions to ask from the student perspective, okay? When we're thinking about motivation, uh, number one is expectancy. It's the student saying to themselves, can I do the task, okay? So this is related to that. Do they think they have the ability still to do it? Uh, do they are they going to put the effort in? Have they experienced success? Are they supported and scaffold enough to actually get to it? Um, is there some sort of challenge? Because if it's too easy, then that's no fun either. Uh, are they getting feedback along the way so that they can keep moving and keep doing the task? Um, and do they think that others do the task? And how hard do they perceive that the task actually is? Okay, so mind, they're thinking to themselves all the time, can I do this? And if they, if they can't, if they do not deem that they can do it, chances are they're not even gonna put the effort in to even try. Second one is, do I want to do the task? Okay, I can do the task, but do I actually want to do it? So that's value and that's kind of shaped by that come from inside. It can also be feedback, how, how they're growing along the way, uh, related also to, um, do I want to do others' perception? So sometimes a student will do a task for one person, but not another, uh, simply because of the person that they're with, their perception. So they'll try harder with one person than they will with another. And again, do I want to do the task? If it's way too difficult, I'm not, I'm not even going to try it. Um, there's a model like control. Um, and then there's always like, face it, we do things because there's an extrinsic benefit too. So, you know, we go to work every day because we know we're going to get paid. So there, there's, there, so there's a whole bunch of things that come through. Do I want to do the task? And then the cost. Um, or expense, ex, uh, whoops, see, I was doing this uh, um, very quickly this afternoon because I didn't have a whole lot of time this week. Um, it's, am I free of obstacles that prevent me from doing it? So are they working in their ZDP zone, zone of proximal development? Um, do they have other commitments that are preventing them from doing it? Do they have do they have the capacity to do it? Is there something else that they would rather be doing um, that they deem that this activity is taking away from that? So I will fix this slide so you have all of it. But uh, that's basically what it is. So you have, can I do the task? Do I want to do the task? And am I free of obstacles that are going to prevent me from getting it done? So that stuff is not only shaped by what happens in our classrooms right um students come with an initial response that is shaped over time uh and involves hereditary and environmental factors so you know their previous schooling their previous home life uh everything that's happened to them up until now all gets all rolled up thrown into when we ask them to do something they're basing it all on all of their past experience. And depending on their past experience, depends how they're going to react and how motivated or engaged they're going to be. So behavior, which is, you know, engagement in that, it's the adaptive way a person or an animal acts in response to a situation or stimuli, whether it's internal or external. Like I said, hereditary environment, it's not always a choice. Neuroscience has proven the body reacts first and only once an individual is in a state of calm does the thought process take over. So if a student has had a bad experience in the past, 
you haven't even got them. They're not even there. They're, they're, they're checked out, man. They're, they're not even listening to you at this time because they're in reaction mode and trying to get out of the situation because they've been placed in a bad situation like that before. Um, and their behaviors, regardless of what, uh, like avoidance, uh, aggression, whatever it is, it's a form of communication and it revi and there's always an underlying need. It can be conscious or subconscious. And sometimes they say, they know that they're doing something. Like a student will say, oh yeah, I'm trying to get kicked out of class. And yes, it's a conscious that they're doing it, but a lot of underlying factors and things that are happening, happening subconsciously um, that they don't even realize are going on as well. So there's reasons for their actions and we don't under, always understand what they are. So a lot of the times we're gonna need to address those factors rather than the behavior itself. So in order to actually be able to motivate them and engage them, which is a, a huge thing. So there are different things that we can do. Um, once the student is calm, we can show them alternative ways to do it and set up environments to help them. So student success for motivation and engagement depends on relationships, safety, structure, routine, predictability. Students will not respond in a time of crisis. It's like the Charlie Brown, you know, what, what, what teacher. The auditory process goes first, like they're not hearing anything. Uh, relationships are key. It's about who you are to that student. Um, you, if you're something or someone to that student, uh, you have some sort of influence and power over them. They're going to want to please you. So that's why it is super important um, to form those attachments. And that doesn't mean that you have to be attached to every student. And every student should have somebody in the building well that they, they, they feel attached to. And students come with a toolbox, okay? We all have our little toolbox, but often our students, because we have the vulnerable ones, they have a toolbox that has exactly one tool in it. And they use that tool for everything and they don't know any other ones. So we need to focus on adapting the environment and providing the scaffolds and the strategies to support them and introduce them to more tools and support. And so they can explore it and practice it and eventually add it to their toolbox, which is not an easy thing. And unfortunately, all of this takes time. Behavior changes, engagement and motivation for our students who have not been engaged and motivated or experienced success in a very long time for most of them. Like you're not gonna get immediate results. They've had huge, you know, long lapses of time where they have not experienced success. You may not see them at all. Doesn't mean that what you're putting into place isn't working. You have to look at the long game. So don't lose hope. Like we put in all these things and we say, oh, well, we're not getting to them. They don't, they aren't doing it. They aren't, well, it takes a while for change to actually happen. So our role is to support students and keep up with the routines and the things that we put in place and the things that we know, the strategies that we're giving them that we know are good for all students to succeed. And we help them compensate until they have their own strategies that they're able to implement on their own. So just, I think that's one of the things that, you know, I go into school every day and I'm like, oh, I didn't get to this one again. Ah, oh, it's just the, what I'm doing doesn't seem to be working. But at the end of the day, you might not see that for another five years. I don't know how many of you have been in the system long enough that you know, uh, we have the students who come in and leave and come in and leave and come in and leave. And then all of a sudden, one day they come in and it's there. Like they just, they're ready. You've given them a bunch of tools. Now they start using them and they get somewhere. So just think of that. So I will um, stay here, talk about motivation. We can talk about English. We can talk about anything you want in this room. Um, some of you wanted math, so you're gonna go off with Michelin and do math stuff with her. 
Uh, a couple of people asked for history with Fabienne. Uh, I know Hugh did. I don't know if Hugh's on, but uh, there'll be a history room with Fabienne. And there was quite a few French teachers as well. I don't know if any of them have showed up, but uh, Julie Rabipai from the Kip Shock it will be sharing uh, French stuff with you. And I'm really sorry that this is really quick and it's like jumping from one thing to another, but I really want you to get the time to talk to whoever it is that you want to talk to. Also feel free, like if you're in a room and then you want to jump into another room or because a lot of us teach multiple subjects, multiple levels, multiple whatever, feel free to jump in and out and go to whatever room you feel like going. I think Mark's done it so that you can just jump in and out and join whatever room that you would like. So have Erica, Rada, Diana, Darlene, what, uh, what would you like to talk about? I do not know exactly off the top of my head uh, what it was that you guys had put down on your thing, but we can uh, do uh, anything that you would. Um, so I had, uh, so nice to meet you all. I'm an alt uh, program teacher. I'm a French and math uh, teacher at PAC Adult. Um, and so I, I missed the first session for a similar thing. And uh, so now I was like, why is it not pressing? Anyway, sorry. So you had me, uh, Shana, you had me at motivation. So now why, that's why I'm still here. I was planning to go see math or French because I, I'm having a problem with my students. As you can imagine, you were talking a lot and I was, and a lot of it resonated. A lot of it, um, I still feel like I'm in the pandemic. I'm still struggling in a lot of times. I'm not the same. My students are definitely the same. Um, I always used to joke. So it's funny, as you were as you were saying, any tech issues are my problem. I was laughing hysterically because I, I feel the same way. I'm a teacher. I'm not bad with tech, but it just it happens. I think it, uh, being a teacher it attracts it. Um, but I always I always felt that I was good and um, you know, but I felt like I was a clown. I was a performer, and it was always like it was pre pandemic. It was hard because I always felt that I had to like be funny more than actually. Uh, be academic, you know, like, and it's, and it comes with, at a price. So my students probably think I'm a doofus and I have not much to teach them. And so it, I always have to like walk that line. Uh, but after the pandemic, I'm feeling like even that superpower, which used to be a superpower is no longer uh, as effective. I'm not as funny. I'm not as, I don't feel like I'm as good as a teacher. I don't feel like I'm as good of a mom, um, <clears throat> nothing, everything I'm feeling like subpar and it hurts because I'm not like that. That's not my personality. That's not what I do. That's not why I'm doing this job. Teaching is my second career. I decided to become a teacher. I was a chemist. And can you imagine me in a lab? Um, <clears throat> so no, I chose to be there. And now I feel like I suck at it. And I'm trying to be vocal about it. Like, yes, it's a pandemic and it is what it is. And we're going to crawl our way out and that's fine. I'm just, I'm struggling with that. So maybe I should go back to the breakout rooms and stuff and see what other people are going through. <laughs> but you have passion and Mark's like, nah. But I you mean, had that. Like Shannon, you were just like, yes, her heart is out there. And I was like, oh my God. So yeah, that's why I'm here. So I wasn't just, yeah, but. Yeah, unfortunately, honestly, you're, well, as you see, you're not the only one. Everyone that I've talked to is feeling kind of the same way right now. We're just not who we were. And we don't like, because it's the pandemic has taken a toll not only in uh, it's taken a toll on our students it's taken a toll on us as every part of us it's taken a toll on our family life our kids are like it's everywhere right so there's no like you know before you used to be able to go home and you used to be able to kind of get away from it but with the pandemic you, you don't go home and get away from it it's still it's still there so i don't think there's any quick fix or answer but I think there's, you know what, maybe try one thing that you really love doing, you know, try one, you know, you do one thing that you say, Hey, yeah, my old self, this, like, this is the one thing or the one thing, like I've been, uh, for me, I wear, wear many, many, many different hats where I work and like you, I'm like, Oh my God, I'm not doing anything, anything well at all. So I've kind of like gotten to the point where I'm like, okay, you know what? A little bit of me is better than none of me. And I'm doing my best. And that's all I can do. I can't, I can't do anymore. Like, so I've had to, like, I think we have to accept that too. 
and then I go, okay, I'm going to take one project that I really want to move forward. And that's the one that I'm going to move forward. And that's what I'm going to focus on. And that's going to be my, you know, my baby. That's the one, you know, that I'm going to do at work. And then I took my home life and I said, you know what? Yeah, I wasn't feeling like I was being a very good mom in that. That is the one good thing that did come out of the pandemic. I have to say that I because we were home a little bit more and I was there and, you know, it wasn't always the rat race. I actually started going outside, doing more stuff with the kids and that. And that is one thing that I've prioritized since I have gone back and I've set my limits. And you know what, if it doesn't get done at work, like within a reasonable time frame, yes, I don't work 32 hours or 35 hours. I work way more than that, but I make sure that I take the time now for my family life and I'm happier for doing it now like I would not go back to how I was before I was I was traveling all the time busy working all the time doing like and I I I will not go back to that so in some ways I've gone okay like it's really crappy and I really don't feel great with myself but in another way I really do so I think it's each of us you have to put your priorities and then you know grab on to them and say this is what it is this is me and this is what I want and this is what I'm going to do. And the rest is just going to have to, that's where it's going to stay. Abby wanted to say something. Go ahead, Abby. Oh, my document. Hi, everyone. Um, <laughs> Rada, I love what you're saying. Um, I think a big part of it is kind of what Shanna said at the beginning of the athletic core is that we're still in the pandemic, but the narrative everywhere is that it's done and everything's back to normal, but we're not right. And it is a struggle to get anything done. And Shanna, I want to agree with you too. It's like, find something you're passionate and throw yourself in there, but be kind to yourself if things don't get finished. And just remember, we're still in the middle of this pandemic. Just the narrative says otherwise. That's, that's my, uh, that's what I wanted to jump in with and thank you for sharing. Thank you. I think that's what it is. I teach adults, right? So I teach pretty much, uh, I, I think it's, I don't know, it's a tough group. Anyway, I shouldn't say the toughest or whatever. It's been a long time since I've done elementary, so I don't know. But uh, they're 16 to like 19, 20. And they, so pre, so again, a lot of it is pandemic, right? So a lot of our conversation is, oh, it's pandemic. And absolutely. I'm not trying to under, like underplay that because as, as we said, we're all trying to claw our way out. But a big part of it also is pre-pandemic. These guys were already failing in the youth sector, didn't have support system, neither at home, didn't connect with a teacher. Again, I'm not blaming anybody. I'm just saying it happens, you know, uh, didn't connect to teachers, didn't connect to anybody. I love also what you said, because that's, that it's been on my mind. I was on a different conference re recently and every student needs to connect with somebody in the building. doesn't matter who it is. could be the director, could be the janitor. Like, I don't care, but they need a connection in the building. It's what a lot of us have missed in the pandemic. So this is what was exacerbated, right? Like the working from home, was great in a lot of ways. You're right. I was able to do the laundry and cook for like eat more often, which is fantastic. But I was working from home. Like people saw my kitchen and they were in my living. Like they're here, right? So it. I. I, I was starting to live. I was starting to live at work, right? So, um. So I think my struggle is that these students just got worse in the pandemic, and they were say 13 ish. So their cell phone regulation, their emotional regulation, their a lot of the like the sexual stuff, the emotion, like all of the stuff got just zip and then gone because it was pandemic and we could not deal with it. And so now they're suddenly 16, 17, and they have no idea how to do any of this. And so I'm just sitting there going, how do I get you through math? You know, you also need to pass because I feel, you know, and so this is where that I like you're, you're in one of your first slides that was like, you know, you're not a magical, you're not a magical, you know, like do what you can, but how do I build that boundary of they didn't have all of these things. And so now me and my co-teaching partner, like we are these things for them. And so how do I create mm -hmm. that thing where I protect myself from the constant daily, daily, you know, that like punch in the gut, like punch in the face where, you know, like, anyway. Anyway, so I it's just, I just wanted to bring it up. Sorry, Mark, you had to. No, it's true. Uh, I don't know where you teach. Like, I don't know, this year, you're at PAC. So mm -hmm. this year, and I, I come from a smaller school. We don't have, we didn't have a whole lot of resources before. It was basically the teachers. We had nobody else. Now they're slowly putting in more people. And we started like putting more things in place to help the students with those, you know, problems that aren't necessarily, um, you know, like aren't related to the math and stuff like that. And I think, I think that's one of the things that 
our system doesn't do well. We don't, we haven't figured out a way, I don't know, at our school, we haven't necessarily figured out a way to make these things, you know, work together so that we can be working along the path at the same time and still slowly moving towards each. It seems to be like, we're pulling a student for this and we're doing this and we're doing that and that's everything's kind of everywhere, but we need to try and find some sort of system that kind of moves everybody together forward working on both the social and the and the academic thing and so we've been we've been playing with a bunch of stuff at our school to be able to do that like we've had um uh and i think most schools do it but like we haven't got it all together where it's like running properly so that's been a focus for us this year and we put little initiatives in so i think that's been helping i know that's been helping our teachers a little bit um, because they're they're feeling like there's other people coming into their classrooms now to help out with like little things like that and and that that are a, a answering the needs of some of the students and the needs that we can't get to so that's and that's very new for us so we're we're do you guys have stuff like that like is there mechanisms like and i think that's what we need to start doing and we need to start telling the administration how many students are actually in this situation because they don't realize how many needy, 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 needy students there are and how many problems there are. They really don't. Like until we started, you know, start putting in these processes and start taking notes of it and going and looking at the student, the whole student body profile and we're going, oh my goodness, we have like three quarters of our students now who have support plans, like little, you know, who have files open that are, you know, this one needs this and this one's like special little things that we never knew, like we knew they were there, but now that we're documenting them in one place and all the teachers, so we put in support plans this year for our students, all the teachers have access to it, all the interventionists have access to it, and we have one for each student who actually ends up having, you know, like needs something written. And oh my goodness, like now we can actually go in and look and say, oh, this is what's happening with this student in this class and this class and this student is, you know, there won't be anything like if it's a confidential thing, there won't be anything that says, you know, what's going on or whatever. But we'll know at least that that student has been seeing our psychoeducator or our, our social work technician, right? And then we go, oh, there's, you know, obviously something. So, yeah, I think we need to get more support because we, like you said, you you can't be everything you That's, just can't you, you're bringing up a very good point uh shana and it's something that w while i was teaching i i tried to do i went back i went, was consulting i taught and i came back and and one thing i can talk about is i like that you make the distinction between motivation and engagement because engagement is observable and that's i think where you should focus on and so you see a progress in engagement, but motivation is something that's much more subtle to see. And so documenting things, um, making observations, uh, steering students towards a towards progress in, in a slow fashion at their pace, you know, just to, to and, and celebrating small victories. You know, if the student sits down and stays seated for five minutes, and I'm I'm just making an example out of nowhere, that's and, and last last week it was three. Well, that's that's progress. That's going in the right direction. And you know, um, you don't have all the solution. Nobody does. I don't have them either, far from it. But the fact you always have to remember that there's a reason why your students are sitting in that classroom instead of somewhere else. Maybe because they feel safe. And if that's what they can get from you, then that's already a victory. You're already on the right track. And we have to celebrate those small victories. We'd like all of our students to be successful and move forward and have productive lives, but there are too many factors outside of the classroom. You know, behavior, behavior issues don't happen because of one thing that happened inside the classroom. They have been stirring for weeks, months, and years. Um, and so you have to remove some of the blame from yourself on a, on a very, uh, a very technical, um, sorry, and be very pragmatic about it and understand that these are not things you can affect. You can affect what's happening in your classroom. So yeah, that's it. And, and to be a little more pragmatic and almost scientific about it and saying, okay, 
This is the situation that this is, it is now. These are the things that I can affect. These are the observations that I make now. And, and not to, to, to remove that judgment other, uh, of the student or yourself and just say, this is the situation. How do we move forward? And you experiment, you go back and forth. Oh, this might work. No, that doesn't work. Okay, let's try this then. And, and you know, it's, it's not an easy thing to do for sure. It was the reason why I went back to consulting after teaching. It was hard for me. It, it, it had a big, and this was pre-pandemic. I started consulting with the AC on the first day of the pandemic. Um, I, my, my sense of self-efficacy took a massive smack in the face. It was like, holy moly, I'm really not a good teacher. I was, everyone told me I was. And, but that was the, that was the, that I had been gone for three and a half years. I came back and I was like, oh, things have changed. So for you to have taught through the pandemic and now in a post-pandemic situation with all the changes that I saw in three and a half years is, is amazing. So be, you know, proud of that and celebrate that. And every day things get a little bit better and that's the best you can do. Diana, was there anything uh, you wanted to talk about or wanted or? I've just been nodding because you guys are, everything that everybody's saying is just hitting the nail on the head. Um, I previously taught elementary school and then I came to Nova. I teach uh, the English right now at Nova, sec three, sec four, sec five English. And last year I taught resource. So it was a very different, this year is very different. You know, I had students in resource who wanted to be there, who came there because they, they needed that extra help. And they, you know, they were serious about getting, getting done what needed to be done. And now I'm, I'm in the, the role of that teacher and many of the students I have are 16, 17 year olds who they don't, they don't want to be there at all. They, this is kind of, I guess, just their last resort and their parents push them there. So yeah, very unmotivated, um, massively addicted to their cell phones, which mm -hmm. makes, to makes total sense because when the world shut down, what was the only way you could communicate with anybody was through technology. And it was even drilled into them, you know, your classes were online, seeing your friends, your family were online. So I understand it, but it's, it's, it's difficult. It, and it's unmotivating for, for me, you know, to stand there in front of a class, you know, I was just doing a, a little review lesson with my students yesterday because they have a, an exam coming up next week, the majority of them. And I, I, I looked up and looked around and out of, I think I had 12 students yesterday, 10 of them were on their phone. So I, I sat down, I said, when you guys are ready, then I'll get back up and have this conversation with you. It's unmotivating. It's disheartening. Um, but I know we have, sorry, but you had 12 sitting in your classroom. I know. Yes. So that was, that was big too. That was great. Do you know At what I mean? Like sometimes, morning, yeah. Sometimes we have to think, okay, like I do the 830 block at us. I'm the only teacher on. Um, now, most of the time they're motivated, but I have a lot of EQ students who come in. Um, so they're coming because of other motivational factors and whatever. And I have lots that come in and come out and whatever, but I'm like, oh, well, they're showing up every morning. We might not get a lot of work done in that block. We tend to we chit chat a little bit and we, you know, we, we, you know, and then I'll say, okay, well, what are you working on? And I do my check-ins and that, but I kind of, you know what, sometimes it's them just being there, honestly. Yeah. I know they're on their cell phones. Yeah. I know they're, but they're still there. And sometimes even though they're doing whatever, they're actually listening. We don't realize it, but they actually are. And they actually are getting something. So, you know, Pat yourself on the back that you had them. And then, you know, yeah. The cell phone thing though is a thing. Did they, did they actually put them away and listen to you after you said that? I think they were, a lot of them were kind of embarrassed that I called them out on it. <laughs> and I said to them, I'm like, I'm not reviewing this material for me. This is for you. I don't have to do this. <laughs> I created this for you. Let's get through it. It's for your success um most of them put it, put put their phones away yeah and i i try to take the little wins when they come just you know motivate myself uh yeah you yeah. can embarrass them 
You got to teach me that superpower. <laughs> I don't have that one. <laughs> we do have, uh, coming up in February, Nova's organized. It's a, we have a speaker. I'm blanking on the name of the, the person, but they're coming in during class time to speak about addiction, all forms of addiction, including cell oh, phone nice. addiction. So I'm excited for that. I hope they're, you know, present for it and the phones are put away, but. Do you happen to be videotaping that? Cause that might be uh, something a lot of us would like to. Listen. I know I can, or share audio. It, I can share it with the next, um, I can see if it's being recorded. I think there's two sessions that are happening. And then if not, I can share at least the speaker. Once I get out more information, I can share yeah. share their credentials or whatever with uh, with you in the next separate or, or just send an email. Oh, that would be great. Yeah. Carlene. Carlene. Are, are you guys both teaching um, structured? Structured classes or individualized? Uh, kind of a bit of both. With my sex three students, it has to be structured because I've tried individualized, independent, and I've discovered a good majority of them aren't capable of staying on task or completing much. Are they all the same level, same same course, same level? Uh, yeah, the sec three, um, yeah, the, whatever that scheduled time. And then sec four and sec five are a little bit more independent. And although in sec four, they're all in the same competency, but then sec five, right now they're kind of multi multi competencies going at the same time because our school typically is sec one through five um i'll give you an example the class that i had i was sec one to three and each level had three levels in it so it cannot be structured so individualized is quite different there and if they're on their phone some of them are using it to listen to the audio. Some are looking up words. Others are texting their friends. So it's uh, always trying to figure out, you know, what can go, what can't go. It's uh, that, that juggling. But one thing that I've tried with my students is the first day I always talk to them about how it's adult ed. And the fact that, uh, you know, adult ed, we have a different set of rules. But if you go high school on me, I'll go high school on you. So, uh, and that tends to work. <laughs> yeah, I read the Mill Riot Act as well. Uh, it's, you know what, you're not going to have a problem with me if you're handing in your stuff and you're moving along at a good pace. But oh boy, are we going to have some discussions when you're not handing in your work and I see you're on your cell phone all the time. Then, you know, we're back to high school, man. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting uh, thing. So I think we're going to end up bringing everybody back now because it's five o'clock on the dot. I will just show you where I put the resources or Mark's going to show you where we put the resources for today from like what's been, uh, what was asked. And, um, and I know that Michelin, Julie and Fabienne are going to update the document uh, as well because they hadn't had time to put their stuff in. Are they in the... Um... Is it in the presentation? Uh, yeah, it will be under the folder. Right, the folder. To the okay. folder. Okay. Yeah. I'll just reshare my screen and then everyone can see it. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. If you just take on the folder on the second one. Yeah. And then January 26 resources. I basically, I, I will disperse them into the folders after, but um, in the meantime, um, I've put links to things there. So basically anybody who asks for resources or whatever in the folder that you can access from the presentation, it's all in there, all the presentations, all the different themes, there's stuff in them, there's not stuff in them, depends on the theme. Uh, I compiled all the resources. I know, I think Fabienne, Julie, and Michelin are going to add some stuff to it too at some point, or at least put a link to where their resources are as well. Um, so I hope that you had some good discussions and that you do get some resources out of it. And don't forget the list because you guys are all living, you know, some 
somewhat of the same realities and you can probably you probably all have some really good stuff that you could be sharing amongst each other and not having to reinvent the wheel all the time so use that uh that nice list of uh, individualized teachers with the subject area to, to connect. So if no one else has anything uh, pressing, I will let you go. Have a good evening, everyone. And uh, we will uh, probably see you at ACES, I think uh, at the uh, summit in March. Uh, I will be there at some point too. So you can drop in and uh, see me there if you have more questions. You can always email me as well. All my contact info is there also. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.